Good morning. I'm Mia. Let me just introduce me. <laughs> um, I'm an HLS student, student senate member, and have been a part of the Providence family for the past three years, and I'm really glad that I get to share with you guys this morning. Um, they asked me to give a testimony of my time here in ways that I've grown, some of my favorite memories, and some advice that I have to share. So I remember sitting in this chapel three years ago at my freshman orientation, listening to Dean DeHaan talk about how fast my time here would fly by. He said that these years were going to be special. Yeah, okay, three years is not going to fly by. So I sat in this chapel very skeptical. To be perfectly honest, I was sitting in this room terrified. I was terrified of, sorry. <laughs> I was terrified of change, and I was terrified of what the future would hold. I was just sitting here wondering why I was even coming to this school. I had a good church, good friends, my family, and it would take me, to, it would take me longer to do what I wanted to do, which was become a nurse. So, why did I pick Providence? I mean, obviously it was a good school, but why was I leaving? Oh, that is. Um, but the truth is, I was comfortable where I was back home. So, I just figured I would try it for a semester, and then I would leave. I, sorry, I lost track of my notes. Um, I simply couldn't fathom why my time here would be any better than what I already had. Clearly, I was wrong. First, being comfortable is not where you grow. Staying in your comfort zone is where you grow. It's where you stay stagnant, and it's where you start putting other things before God. And that is where I was. So with that, I started my first month, first month of school. It had its ups and downs like any new thing. It wasn't actually half bad. I actually liked it, and things were going totally fine. That is until COVID-19 came around. Um, so it was 2021, so the rules were less extreme. But here, if you were exposed to COVID, you had to quarantine for five days. One of my friends in my friend group got COVID, which meant that we all had to quarantine. I happened to be home visiting my family when I got the call that I needed to quarantine, so I just stayed there. At first it was sweet, I got some extra time with the family and friends that I had missed so much and had not wanted to leave. And it was great, until I hit day five, and I had a cold. And that quickly turned into COVID, and then eventually pneumonia, and a few other pretty severe medical conditions. It meant countless doctor visits, multiple hospital visits, and hours a day spent attached to a machine just so that I could breathe. I missed a month of school, I took incompletes in all my term courses, and had to figure out how to catch up even though I could barely function. It was awful. <laughs> I came back to school, I couldn't walk up the steps to my apartment without stopping to catch my breath, or make dinner without having to take a nap before or after. I was recently reminded of Psalm 34, 18, the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. This is very true. The Lord was very gracious to me. This brings me to one of the things that I think is underrated about Providence. It's the community. Yes, we always talk about the community, my friends do this or that, or I went to so-and-so's apartment. But I mean community in a much deeper sense. I mean the connected sense of Providence as a family. The longer I'm here, the more I realize it truly is a family. And as I was laying there sick, I would get emails from students that I didn't even know asking how they could be praying for me. I got emails from faculty telling me that they were praying for me in their morning meetings. And I would get texts from friends who I had only met a month before asking how I was doing and what they could do to help me. When I came back to campus, people who I had met were asking how I was and saying that they had been praying for me. I was so overwhelmed by the amount of love I felt from people who I didn't even know that well or even at all. But it didn't just stop there. I spent seven months on high doses of steroids to try and help me get better, which if any of you have been on steroids for any period of time, you know that they make you agitated and angry. And that's why I'm telling you, I was cranky, I was in pain, and I was the most negative person you probably could have met. And yet, the people here were so kind to me. They sat with me when I needed a friend, they listened to me when I didn't know how to process things, and they would laugh with me, cry with me, and I'm very thankful to have friends who walked with me through such a difficult season of my life. I had a friend leave a school dance 10 minutes after it had started to come sit with me because I was too exhausted. I also had a friend figure out how to make brownies from the most bizarre ingredients since I was on a crazy strict diet and couldn't eat anything with my health issues. These people loved me, challenged me, and showed me Christ's love through how they treated me. They truly showed me the meaning of being connected in a community. Then they became my family. And that family continues to grow and expand the more that I get to know all of you. I did my exit interview a few weeks ago, and I was talking to Dr. Sue. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Um, he was telling me that just because you graduate doesn't mean you leave the family. It just looks different. But we are no less part of the family. In my first year at Providence, the Lord humbled me, and he still is humbling me. But that year, he humbled me in more ways than I would have ever thought possible. I went from wanting to help everyone to not even being able to complete my own basic tasks. He made me relinquish control over the things that I wanted and made me dependent on other people. 
He made me cling to him instead of whatever else I had been holding on to. I had to trust that he had a plan for my life that was better than whatever I had been planning, which is so much easier to remember when you're not laying in the hospital sick. Obviously, getting sick is not a favorite memory, is not a favorite moment either, but it is an area that I can look back and see how faithful God has been to me. These same people were, who were so loving to me in that season are still my friends. These friends are who I have shared some of my favorite memories with. Whether it was building forts with our apartment mattresses, or hiding in closets and under beanbags to scare someone or to prove a point, it started with a lot of laughter and ended with sweet conversations. Late night dance parties, TikToks that never got posted, failed attempts of recipes, long drives with good music, sunsets, surprise Disney trips, coffee bo and boba dates, or mocking a ridiculous dating show are all things that are not monumental by any means, but they have become very precious to me. Truly, the Lord has been faithful to me, and I certainly could not see it in those low moments, and sometimes not even in the high ones, but I can see a little of what the Lord was doing and how he was refining me to be more like him. This brings me to the part where I'm supposed to share advice. And I'm, I'm not sure I'm qualified to share advice because I'm still learning so much, but I have realized that we never stop learning. So I guess what I would tell my freshman self is three things. Get involved, try new things, and trust the Lord. I know these sound cliche, but they aren't less true. Get involved with students and get to know people who may not seem like your usual cup of tea. You never know where you're going to make a good friend. Learn how to better support and serve your peers, get coffee with them, listen to their stories, and what God is doing in their life. The same, the same is true for the faculty and staff. Know people and learn from them. These people, Lord willing, will eventually turn into your community if they have not already. The best part of it is that the Providence family is always growing, so there's always new people to know. And I certainly don't know all of you as well as I could, but I do know that a lot of you, and I'm very thankful for that. My second thing is to try new things. Maybe for some of you this is easy, but for me it's not. I'm not the biggest fan of change, and I don't like going outside my comfort zone. I'm going to share something with you that I wish I was joking about, but unfortunately I am not. First, you need to know that I'm an introvert, which is why I don't like getting up here and giving speeches. And the second is that I take my schoolwork pretty seriously. So my first year here, I would spend most of my time sitting in my apartment doing my homework. And my roommates would force me out of my apartment and drag me along to whatever they were doing. Whether it was sitting, whether it was getting dinner, going for a walk, or sitting on the patio in the sun, they would gently remind me why I should come along. They would tell me that I couldn't always do homework no matter how much I had or how hard it was. I needed to get out and to see the world. And they were right. As hard as it was at times being forced out the door, they taught me such an important thing. So much of learning happens outside of our schoolwork. I got so focused on my work that I forgot to see the goodness and beauty that was literally right in front of me here in Pasadena. In the past summer, I was lucky enough to have been able to go to Europe and Israel with Providence. It was amazing. I could, have, I could never have enough right words to explain how wonderful it was. But the best part of these trips were not the endless laughter, the goofy comments, the people, the food, the beaches. It wasn't even the bizarre bus rides, getting lost in the field, locking people out of my hotel room, or one particularly very crazy late night adventure to a laundromat in Jerusalem. <laughs> these are all wonderful parts of the trip, but the best part of the trip is the moments that I was able to see God so clearly. The moments where things are so overwhelmingly beautiful that you can't help but let your jaw drop or a tear escape your eye. These were moments when I was able to see goodness, beauty, and truth in such an obvious way. It was life-changing. Once you see it, you can't go back. It changes the way you look at things, and if I hadn't been willing to try new things and take new adventures, I would have never gotten to experience this. You don't have to go abroad to see this, though. You can see goodness, beauty, and truth right here. So I guess my point is to find the balance. Do your work well, but don't miss out on what's right in front of you either. The last thing is to trust the Lord. You all probably know this, but it's true. Step outside your comfort zone, meet new people, try new things. The hard things challenge us and force us to trust that the Lord has a plan. Lord willing, he is refining you to be more like him, and we just have to trust that his plan is far better than ours could ever be. So, three years ago, I sat in this room, not having a clue what the future would hold. Was it harder than I expected? Yes. But it did turn out that Dean DeHaan was right. These years did fly by, and they've only gotten faster the longer than I've been here. I have learned so much during my time here, and yet I still have so much to learn. I am so beyond grateful that I have been blessed to have these past three years at Providence, and it's amazing, and I will treasure it. Thank you.